Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Sketch Monkey here. Today we are going to have a look at an uh, American classic when it comes to muscle cars and that is the Dodge Coronet and specifically the 1970 model. It's very muggy and rainy and dark outside today which makes it perfect to make a modernization today. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna modernize the 1970 Dodge Coronet and see how it's going to turn out. What if it was built in 2020? The Dodge Coronet was introduced with the division's first post-war body styles. Lower trim lines were the Wayfarer and the Meadow Brook, the Wayfarer being built on a shorter 115 inch wheelbase. The only engine for the original Dodge Coronet was a six cylinder producing 103 horsepower. The stock Dodge Coronet was a smooth running car and the six cylinder engine could power the car to 90 miles per hour. That's 145 kilometers per hour. A limited production model was a four-door, eight-passenger limousine, an extended version of the stock Coronet. One of the most notable features of the first-generation Coronet was this three-speed fluid-driven transmission that was operated by a foot pedal on the floor and no shifter were required. The original version of the Dodge Coronet lasted from 1949 to 1953 when it was replaced by the second generation. With the second generation of the Dodge Coronet, it went through a complete redesign and it gained an optional 3.9 liter Hemi engine and set over 100 land speed records at the Bonneville Salt Flats. The windshield finally became one piece and electric windshield wipers were standard, while a radio cost $83. The Dodge Royal line was added above the Coronet in 1954. Dodge were putting more luxury into all of its models, which included the Meadowbrook, Coronet, and the new Royal lines. Still, styling changes for 1954 were modest. The chrome molding on the hood lip was wider than on the 1953 models, and a large chrome upright in the center of the grille replaced the five vertical dividers used previously. 1954 saw Chrysler's first fully automatic transmission, two-speed power flight, offered as an extra cost option on all Dodges. The third generation of the Dodge Coronet was introduced in 1955, and the bodies were completely restyled to be lower, wider and longer than the lumpy pre-war style. The straight six now producing 123 horsepower and two V8 engines were offered, a 4.4 liter and a 5.2 liter. A new style was introduced with the fourth generation in 1957 and you can now get a 340 horsepower V8 in your Dodge Coronet. People would complain about water leaks for this generation, but in general, they liked the new styling and the ride comfort, and 0 to 60 was completed in 12.3 seconds. The fifth generation of the Dodge Cordette was introduced in 1965 and lasted up until 1970 with a bunch of facelifts and redesign in between. The Coronet received a complete redesign in 1968, and there was a mild facelift in 1970, and that's the model that we're focusing on in this redesign. In mid-1969, the A12 package was introduced on the Super B. It included a 390 horsepower version of the 440, a black fiberglass lift off hood secured with metal pins, heavy duty suspension and 15 inch steel wheels with no hubcaps or wheel covers. The hood had an integrated forward-facing scoop which sealed to the air cleaner assembly and bore a decal on each side with the words six pack in red letters. The base coronet and deluxe were available as two-door coupés, four-door sedans or station wagons. The base coronet was dropped in 1969 leaving the deluxe as the lowest trim level through 1970. 
the Super B was only available as a two-door coupe or a two-door hardtop. Chrysler did display a convertible with Super B stripes at car shows in 1968, but never offered it as a production model. But some enthusiasts have created phantom or fake Super B convertibles by adding the appropriate trim and stripes to Coronet 500 convertibles. The Dodge Super B was a limited production muscle car produced from 1968 to 1971. The original Super B was based on a Dodge Coronet, a two-door model only, and was produced from 1968 to 1970. It was Dodge's low-priced muscle car, the equivalent to Plymouth Roadrunner, and was priced at $3,027. Available with Hemi engine, this option increased the price by 33%, so only 125 models were sold with this engine option. The Super B included a heavy-duty suspension and optional Mopar A8334 speed manual transmission with high-performance tires and a stripe with the B logo wrapped around the tail. The name Super B was derived from the B body designation given Chrysler's mid-sized cars, which included the Coronet. In 1970, which is the model that we have right here, the Super B was given a different front end look that consisted of a dual oval grille that was referred to as Bumblebee Wings. Despite the new looks, the engine as well as the Ram Changer hood the, that carried over from the 1969 model, sales plummeted for the 1970 model. In 1970, Dodge also produced four Super B convertibles, but the whereabouts of these four cars are unknown. Two additional generations of the Dodge Coronet was to be introduced in 1971 and 1975, although it never really reached the popularity it had in the 60s. There was also an eighth generation, but that was only used in the Colombian market as the Dodge Diplomat. So talking about this modernization and redesign of the 1970 Dodge Coronet, the biggest change that we're going to have to make to make it a modern car is to completely change the proportions of the car. We have a very, very stretched rear end that needs to be shorter if we want to make it modern. And we also need to move back the greenhouse because the A pillar of the 1970 model sits very far forward and we need to move all of that back. And also, of course, we need to bring the car down to the ground. And we do that by adding bodywork to the car and also creating a bumper for the car. The original 1970s and 60s car, they basically do not have any bumpers. And that, of course, could not work today. So we have to add that and also restyle the whole car in general. And we're going to update the wheels as you can see here and just basically have some fun with this redesign. So the main thing that I wanna focus on in the graphics in the front is to have some sort of division in the center line of the car because we have these bumblebee uh, or whatever it's called, the bumblebee wing design of the 1970. So I want to implement that somehow in this redesign and I do that by creating this center line that stretches across the hood and down into the fender. But for the rest of the styling it's a muscle car and the specific design language of muscle cars is very a, a simple design. It's simple geometries and it's, it's a lot of parallel lines and very simple graphics. You can just look at the Camaro, maybe not, maybe not the recent Camaros, the most recent one, but you, for example, you can look at the Dodge Hellcat and the Chargers, and those are the type of cars that I'm keeping in mind when I'm doing this redesign. So we're about to finish up this redesign right here. There are a few details left to do, maybe change a bit on the proportions and spice up the contrast and coloring of the car. So there we have it guys, that's the redesign of the 1970 Dodge Coronet. 
The proportions are completely different from modern cars that we see today, so that has to be changed. But still, we have some key lines in the Dodge Coronet, such as your rear fender line. And also it has a, a sim symmetrical line in the rear that I want to implement, that I wanted to implement in this modernization. And I did that by creating these two lines, one that goes right below the door and up to the back, and then we have this sharp shoulder line that stretches all the way front to the to the front uh, headlights. I hope you enjoyed this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me today. I'm the Sketch Monkey. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel and enjoy these kind of weird redesigns and modernizations of cars, you might want to subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.